Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank you for visiting the channel and watching this video. If you find it to be useful and enjoyable, would you consider hitting the like button? And uh, if you'd like to come back and see some other videos, hit the subscribe button. Um, with that being said, uh, let's talk about what this video is going to be about. Today, I'm going to do what I call a recess ring because it has a recessed area around the stone that I oxidize with uh, an agent that turns the surface of the silver into silver oxide, so it makes it black, uh, and leaves a shiny rim around the outside, so it really accentuates the stone, I think. I really like making these, and they sell pretty well, so I hope they turn out to be a good project for you as well. So, For this particular project, I picked out a teardrop-shaped uh, piece of brecciated mukaite, which is hard to say really fast in multiple times in a row. So. Um, but I thought uh, the light colored stone here would look really nice with the oxidized area that we're going to create around it, uh, which will be surrounded with a shiny silver area. So uh, it typically looks really good and makes the stone really pop in a ring like this. So let's get going on this one. First off, we're going to have to make a bezel. Um, when you have a stone that has a sharp point on it like this or a square corner, um, it's going to require a little bit of fancy work on the bezel and I'll show you that at the end of the video when we're going to set the stone. Um, prior to that though you make it pretty much the same as you would any other bezel. I usually start by making a sharp bend a little ways away from the end of the bezel though well, after I file it of course. Nice flat surface here. So I'm going to make a sharp little bend there to deal with the point of this stone when I'm measuring the size of the bezel. Oops. That way I've already got it tightly tucked into that, that tip there, and so I can get a pretty good snug fit around the stone here. One of the things I see beginners do when they're doing a, a stone, uh, a bezel for a stone with a point, they have the urge to sometimes put the, the solder joint right at the point, which is generally a bad idea. It's the hardest part to bend on the bezel, so uh, it's usually best to put it in one of the straighter parts so you don't have to bend it as much there because it's a little stiffer and springier there. Uh, much easier to deal with on a side than it is uh, in a pointy area. Looks like I did okay on the size on this one. Okay. So that's going to be our bezel. Um, before we cut out the sheet for the bottom though, uh, I need to uh, create the border that I'm going to put around the outside uh, which creates the recessed area right next to the bezel 
And for this, I, I typically use half round wire if I want a big uh, bold ring. And what I do is with half round wire, I'm going to lay it on its side instead of the way you'd normally make a band out of it like this. It makes for a nice uh, smooth surface that, go, that you can create a nice clean line around there as well as having a nice rounded outer surface to file the, the base of the bezel into nicely. Uh, so it ends up looking um, almost like it was cast uh, and pretty seamless. So uh, to start with though, we're going to need to kind of find the rough size to make this outer border that I'm going to use. This, uh, this in particular today I'm using 8 gauge half round. I've used smaller sizes too, 10 gauge or 12 gauge. It depends on how high you want the the ridge on the outside to be. and This, proof, this uh, creates a real deep uh, recessed area. It's easy to keep it uh, oxidized inside of there. So uh, to start with I'm going to kind of shape the rounded part here I think and to do that, where did I stick my ring man? I can kind of eyeball this here. Let's see I'm going to need a curve about right here. that to just get it started. Okay, see that's a little tight right now so I'm going to have to widen that out a bit. I find that the flat nose pliers ding up the metal less when you're doing this so if you want to do a little hand shaping it's fine. So right now that's too small right so I need to make it a little bit bigger. So I don't have to get the shape perfect right now. I'm just trying to get a proportion as far as about to, uh, to how far away from the bezel it's going to sit. I don't like it to sit too far away because it'll make a really huge ring. Uh, if you get too close, sometimes when you solder it down, uh, some of the solder from the outer part here will flow underneath and create kind of a little bridge between the bezel and this border piece that we're putting on and then it won't oxidize the same and it'll, it'll look obvious. So I'm trying to get it close but not too close. And I can fine tune this once I cut off a piece of this. I think we're kind of in the range here. So I'm going to cut this off. And I think let's, uh, let's open it up a little bit here. And I still have a beveled cut on this side so I'm going to snip it snip that off from the last time somebody cut off this piece of wire. Alright, so let's start out by making sure they're relatively straight and flat. Okay, so now these are going to be coming together like this at that angle, so I need to cut with the file on the inside of each of these an angle that's going to be kind of parallel to each other on either side so when I solder these together they come together neatly and I want to do it I don't know if you can see this I'll zoom in with the camera a little bit but it's going to be kind of like that angle so that it comes up straight to right at the top edge where that uh, where the flat edge right now meets the top so let's start with this side here this would probably be a good time to talk about the variations you can do with this kind of a, a ring. Uh, it doesn't have to be a teardrop shape. I've done a lot of them with ovals, with a nice clean oval border. Um, you can do angular ones, squares, uh, abstract shapes. Sometimes it's fun to do, like if I did this, uh, this pear shape here, um, and then I did this a pear shape as well, but not exactly the same angle. Sometimes that looks kind of cool. But generally I like to try and match the shape of the, the stone pretty well, so I'm going to need to do a little work to get this to look perfect. I need to take this side just a tiny bit now and file it again. Just 
starting to get within range of where it's probably good enough. I've made a lot of little subtle adjustments, and I think I'm going to just go with this. It's pretty close. Uh, it's pretty uh, amazing the small uh, inconsistencies that the human eye can see, but they, they, it is pretty obvious sometimes when you're not quite straight on something here. So I think to start with, I'm going to solder this closed. So I got a few pieces of solder here. Reasonably symmetrical. Pretty good, I think. So, um, one of the things before we soldered this down onto a piece of sheet to make the border around the bezel, um, you want to make sure it's, you know, sitting flat on the table. It doesn't have a wobble because we're going to be soldering it down to a piece of sheet, and we want it to be relatively flat. Just to make sure, I'm going to run my file over the bottom a couple of times to try and get a, an even edge. I think it's relatively flat, but just to make sure that it's kind of a, a nice flat surface for the solder to run along. And um, we're just going to be trimming off any excess solder around the outside, or excess sheet around the outside of this, so I can use this to dictate the size of the piece of sheet that I'm going to need. And I'm going to use relatively thin sheet like I usually do for the backs of bezels. This one's 26 gauge sheet and I think I can get it right off of here. So I'm going to make a little mark there. We'll just cut it along there. I think I usually leave at least an eighth of an inch around all sides on the bezel uh, for the bottom of the sheet, but in this case I may have cut it a little close. But I think that's okay. You want to make sure when you get this all positioned uh, and ready to flux and put some solder in there, you want to make sure it's right where you want it because once the flux gets partially dry and sticky, it's hard to move these things around without uh, breaking everything loose. And so let's, uh, let's see if we can't stick it down in place here and then we'll put some solder on there. prevent it from moving too much, I'm going to kind of dribble from above here. Using the pick to make sure nothing shifted at all. And if it did, I can push it a little bit with the pick sometimes. <clears throat> the other thing I do is I make sure that when I get the flux dried with the torch, that everything sits back down flush because when the solder flows on this I'm going to want it to try to run along the whole bottom seam here and if it's raised in any areas there it's not going to be able to to wick along that seam same way with the bezel so um, the other thing to know about this particular soldering operation is we're going to be oxidizing this gap in between the two of them with um, a solution called, uh, the stuff I use is called Silver Black, or they may have changed the name to Black Max. Um, but either way, uh, we don't want a lot of messy solder in there. And so when we place the solder that we're going to solder these two things down with, on the inside of the bezel, it doesn't matter if there's a little you know, puddling of the solder. And the outside of this wire that we put around the outside, uh, we're going to be trimming that excess sheet off. So if we put the solder leaning against the outside or touching from the outside, not much is going to go into the inside seam. And on the inside here, not much is going to go into that gap between there as well. So 
solder the inside of the bezel and outside of the border. That way, just toss them in there. I'm going to use quite a bit of solder on these. I see a lot of people putting pieces about an eighth of this size. They're putting like 16 of them in here. And that to me seems like a lot of excess work. Because once it flows, as long as it's touching the bottom and the side, it'll wick along that entire seam. So you don't have to line them up along the whole, whole thing like that. Um, and I'll probably what I'll do is I'm going to lean one over here, one over here, one over here, one over here on the outside just to make sure it um, stays in place. And then if I have any gaps left over, I'll go back and I'll add some soldering with the pick. Don't have to do that too much though, as long as you have everything flat usually. So make sure everything's tucked up in this there. When you're doing a little bit bigger bezel like this, you still need to go around the outside. There's quite a bit of mass in this band that goes around the outside for the border. And the sheet is going to be the hottest, or the hardest part to get hot because it's kind of protected from everything else. <clears throat> so I'll be need to going around the outside like this, but visiting the center here part as well because there's some surface area in there that's going to need to be heated. See a few gaps on the outside. Just to be sure, I'm going to throw a little bit more <clears throat> right over here. And maybe a little more right there. I'm mostly just trying to make sure there's no gaps in the solder joint. And it doesn't hurt if there's quite a bit of solder here. Much of it's going to get cut off. I'm just going to trim off the excess sheet here. Since this is half round wire, it curves under a little bit, so this is one of those times where you can kind of smooth the bezel right into the edge of the half round there. And if you do it right, it'll end up looking seamlessly like the sheet and the half round connect. I don't know if you can see, but hopefully you can see that it looks relatively seamless. I can see a little bit of the crack here still. Um, the polisher will take care of that last little bit, I, I think. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to use this piece of uh, 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 random low dome half 
round wire which I had laying around. Uh, it's about long enough for the size that I wanted to make this. And low dome half round, if you don't know, is not a full half circle like a lot of half round wire. Uh, it's more spread out so you get a higher profile from looking at it from downwards uh, compared to the depth of it. And it's useful for a lot of different kinds of ring bands. So I think I'm going to use this one for this. And there's two different ways to do it. One, you can just make a simple uh, silver band out of it, file a flat spot on it, and then balance it on the back and solder it on there. Or I like to do it so it has an opening at the top, and then I file it so it sits flush on the back of the back here. And then you can mount it, and it looks like it just merges with the ring. So I think I'm going to try and do that style. It also makes the head of the ring sit lower on the finger that way. And I think it looks a little more finished. I'm going to do a little pre-rounding here. I'm just going to make sure these are relatively lined up. And then this part, um, I'll probably speed up in the film, but I'm going to file this so it's flat on top. And I usually start by going with the way that the previous file joints are. If you go this way, it's going to chatter on you and make terrible noises. So I usually go this, this direction to start at least. setting it on the table to see that it sits pretty flat and straight up and down that way. The most challenging part for me on these rings is getting the band on straight so that this points down the finger correctly. Um, something that helps me is if I take a marker I look at it from the top I kind of eyeball the center point at least what my eye sees is the center point Make a mark there. I try to make a mark about the same distance on this side. Um, another thing you could do if you wanted to try and get some is you could just measure from here. That's about 22 millimeters. That's pretty close. So get the, oh. the other thing you got to do, so I can see it on the front here, I need to be able to see it on the back too. That at least gives me a, a shot at getting it pretty close to straight on there. Um, so I can just kind of and line it up that way. Make sure it's centered this way as well. That looks pretty good to me. Let's flux it and solder it on and take a look at it. Whenever I'm soldering a band to the back of a head like this, most of the time you just need to kind of focus the heat around the outside of the head part of the ring. The band, you know, maybe at the very end you can start hitting it with the heat, but it's getting a lot of heat just by sitting on top of this part that you're heating. The band will get up to temperature pretty easily being up top here. The base is the one you have trouble getting up to 1450 degrees here.
straight, I think. Even if I have a crooked finger. <laughs> so. Okay, so I'm going to heat that up and let that pickle for just a bit. I'm going to come back and I will... What I do with these ones, since I have to oxidize that little gap in there, I will pickle this. I will probably um, polish it. The stone is relatively hard, so I don't have to worry about scratching it. So I'll probably set the stone, polish it through the first wheel, clean it up. We'll oxidize that area in the gap there, and then um, and then we'll do the final polish on it. <clears throat> so I pickled this for a while. It's most cleaned up. It looks like. Just do a little. I'm going to probably take it to the Dremel and clean it up a bit. Try to do a little filing. Okay, be right back. Okay, I did a little bit of cleanup with the Dremel. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the stone for this one. Got a couple of issues to deal with with this kind of a stone. Sometimes when you have these uh, teardrop shaped stones, uh, the edge of the curve on the side of the stone is at a different height than where the edge of the curve is at the point, meaning that the point drops down lower than the rest of it. In that case, oftentimes you have to file this into a, a small gradual taper downwards to make that uh, match the stone. Another way to deal with that situation is if you're going to put some backing behind the stone, like I usually uh, do, you can uh, put a little bit more backing on the front of the stone here to raise up that point slightly, uh, just to elevate it so that that whole level is uh, lined up with the top of the bezel there, so you can just get a, a little grab over the top. Um, I think this one's pretty close to... This one's actually cut well compared to a lot of them, so I think I may not have as many problems as I do sometimes with these things. So let's cut a couple of pieces of tag board here. Okay. So I can see that needs at least one more. Okay, the final thing we do with a sharp point like this, basically when you go to compress this over the top of the stone to get a tight fit uh, over that curve, um, there's too much metal at a sharp juncture like this where when you go to bend it in, it's going to wrinkle a lot because you're trying to compress a lot of different metal into a smaller area than it should be forced into. In order to make that actually happen a little more easily, if you actually thin out the bezel right at that point just a little bit, maybe to make it half as thin, just right at the top, you got to be careful. The bezel is already pretty thin. But if you just thin that end point out just a little bit, it gets rid of just enough metal to where it makes it easier to compress what's left into that space, even though it normally would have a tendency to wrinkle. So, so I'm going to go around and do what I normally do is uh, use this as the initial part of the setting process to push that straight end against the stone. That. And then I usually go straight in on the point at first, like this. And then start hitting the corners on either side of it like that to kind of really force it down. I've seen a lot of really terrible ways to, to do corners on stones. I've seen people cut big 45 degree notches out of them. I've seen them cut just a straight slot down there and then fold over the top. Sometimes people come up with some really messy looking ways to do it. But I found that just reducing the thickness of the bezel in those, in those areas where there's a point, as long as you're setting your stone up at the appropriate height, you don't have too much excess bezel then to get compressed into that area. So you'll see that the, the point
point on this one is actually coming out relatively nice. It's not uh, it's not too wrinkly looking or anything. Okay. So so yeah, so just tighten it down all the way around, and then we'll do a burnish on it. And then uh, what I will do on this one is I'm gonna take it back to the polishing machine and give it the initial polish on the first wheel which is with a compound called white diamond and it's a it's a more abrasive polish gets rid of all the scratches and then I'll come back clean it up and we'll oxidize this little cavity around here that we've created with this half round wire on its side uh, so it's black in there and you'll really see how after we uh, do the final polish with the ZAM how much that stone really pops out at you when it's got that black background in that cavity around there. It really, it really makes it jump out. So, um, with the exception of a few little, you know, fine tunings, this one's ready to polish. So, I'm going to do that next, and then I'll come back and show you how to oxidize it. I've cleaned up the the ring after the initial polish, so you can get kind of an idea of what it looks like. Um, it's important to get rid of all of the uh, polishing compound that's in the recessed area that you want to oxidize because the wax in the compound kind of coats the surface and prevents the chemical from actually turning the surface of the silver into silver oxide, which is what's going on here when we do this. So I uh, oftentimes will bite the end off a toothpick. chew up the end a little bit, it gives me kind of a little a miniature brush. And then I poured a little of this chemical, uh, like I have stuff called Black Max. There's all sorts of different kinds of oxidizing agents you can get. This is stuff that I've used for years and it makes a nice dark black color uh, out of the surface of the silver. Um, it's not a coating, it's an actual chemical reaction. So you touch this to the metal and it instantaneously um, has a chemical reaction that causes the surface of the silver to turn into silver oxide. It bonds with oxygen. So you want to be careful you don't get it too many places where you don't want it because once it's there it's hard to see how quickly it just turns it black. But you want to get that whole recessed area pretty good. What we'll do is after we're done with this, we'll polish off the excess. And the reason I like these deep recesses like this is because it's hard to polish the oxidizing agent. It's hard to get rid of that uh, accidentally, the surface of the silver that you've turned black if it's in a big deep hole like that. Okay. So you can see how I turned it pretty black in there. Make sure I didn't miss any spots. If you do accidentally polish away some of the surface you've changed into a black surface, uh, you can always go back and just do a little tiny touch up. But it's important that after you do this, you rinse it off with some water. I just have some soapy water in this cup here. And then I'll go clean it off and scrub off any excess and dry it off. And then I'm going to do that final polish on it and I'll show you the final part. Alright, there's your final product. A nice... Uh, relatively symmetrical ring, pretty stone, nice black border around it to make it stand out from the silver, the silver, shiny silver. Uh, notice where the two join together, it looks really nice and smooth and neat. It's a good, a good quality looking ring, so, all right. It's not really me, but uh, I have a feeling someone else might buy it. All right, that's how you make a, a ring with a, a little recessed area around it that you can oxidize to make the stone stand out. Thank you for watching my video on how to make a recessed ring. And um, if you found it to be enjoyable, would you consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel? 
Uh, I appreciate you watching, so thanks again, and happy silversmithing. Take care.